Oh! Mama Max is back on YouTube, claiming that the people who criticized him are suffering from mass psychosis in his own words. And uh, <laughs> no, that's not even a joke. Now, you've probably heard a lot of different things about me. <laughs> uh, distinguishing between what's real and what's not uh, is a challenge in the year 2024. <laughs> and it's probably only going to get harder as time goes on. Um, mass psychosis is very real and I'm sure you all can pretty much feel it at this point. I previously made multiple videos about Mama Max. He's a YouTuber who was on the platform for a long time and I was aware of and kind of watching him for a while too. But he eventually became known as a predator catcher, somebody who was going out and hunting creeps and really getting them. He was heralded as perhaps the greatest on YouTube. But it turned out that many of his investigations were fabricated and on top of that, he ruined a pretty big case against an alleged cult due to his incompetence and general insane behavior. Now, I do recommend watching at least my first previous video about Max on the Turkey Tom channel to get really caught up to speed on what happened or else some of this won't really make sense to you. But we do have some interesting updates about Max and where he's been since he left YouTube. Max continued posting to his Patreon supporters even after all this went down, with his first post from February of 2024 reading as follows. Despite the recent defamation campaign, your support has been invaluable. Unfortunately, our operation here has been severely crippled, so I'm currently seeking local employment, but I remain committed to our film projects in my free time. Here are the current plans. We'll proceed with the documentary on Camden Gerard Davis after law enforcement has concluded their investigation. An extremely detailed response video, Silence All Survivors, is in the works, revealing certain influencers' actions against us and the survivors we're supporting. Given the sheer volume of attacks, finalizing this project may take months. If there are specific concerns you want addressed, please mention them in the comments. It seems our detractors will continue to drown out our voices with more falsehoods and accusations until we give up, but the truth soon emerges over the horizon. Jesus, he's still talking like an anime character. Stay alert and open-minded until you finally see the other side of this story. Theoretically, I could engage in the same manipulative strategies, align with their adversaries, exploit every rumor and accusation ever made about them, orchestrate gossip among our peers to alienate them, and even platform their most abusive ex-partners and past enemies. However, I refuse to engage in such tactics, choosing instead to present facts and let you judge them based on their merits. Thank you again for believing in us. We will not be silenced. Oh, brother, this guy guys, guys, guys. I just want to talk. I don't think that anybody had realized how crazy Max was and probably still is, um, at least prior to the situation going down, nobody had really talked about it. I mean, he had talked about his mental health struggles in the past, but you know, stuff like this is genuinely very concerning. At no point does he acknowledge the criticisms made of him, at no point does he give any real ground to any of it, and absolutely at no point does he take responsibility for how he ruined the God Cult investigation. Instead, he seems intent on putting on a brave face and pretending like, you know, nothing's happening. He's stating that everything is fine. Sure, we had some short-term set Backs, but I, Mama Max, will make a valiant return to YouTube to protect victims and destroy our detractors, our slanderers. The thing is, many of the people who came out against him were his own friends. Nexpo, for example, is a pretty big sort of dark content creator, kind of a horror genre type guy. You guys have probably seen his videos. And he came out and gave some testimony to Nick DiOrio about how Max was and how he felt really misled by him. Now, another channel called Night Docs also had a pretty interesting story about how Max falsely accused him and it caused his social life to fall apart. And of course, you have Mudahar. Someone who was sort of a Mama Max ally and definitely his friend, who also came out and just like shit all over him once all of this went down. And the funny thing about it is that realistically, people gave Max a lot of leeway. I remember when this controversy first went down, when Max called out Critical and had been like, you need to talk about this right now. I could literally cancel you, Charlie, and I choose not to. <laughs> it's true though. It Like, it's the truth. Like, I'm the friggin' pedo hunter. People were weirded out by it, but not everybody was like, all right, it's time to drop Max. We're done with him, you know, this guy, because, you know, they were his friend on one hand. And then for people like me who like, I talked to Max, so I didn't really know him. It was like, okay, well, we'll see where this goes, but it doesn't necessarily mean that Max's career is toast, right? But as more and more information came out, as Max incriminated himself and Spencer on various live streams, it became clear that this was too bad to be totally ignored. And then everyone dropped their videos almost simultaneously, you know, when it needed to happen. But at the time of this post, Max went silent once again. He stopped posting on Patreon and the silent Silence All Survivors project fell into the shadows once again as people moved on to other subjects. But in May of 2024, we would get another update from Max from his Patreon. 
Happy Mother's Day, everyone! Firstly, I want to remind mothers, fathers, teachers, and guardians how vital you are in guiding our future generations through these challenging times. Whether I'm around or not, children remain the most important and the most vulnerable people in our declining world. They require your guidance and protection, especially on the internet today. I apologize for my absence, as my real-life responsibilities took priority. I'm saddened by the negativity and disinformation many of us face in this chaotic online battleground, and I'm so sorry to any of you who are attacked for defending us on our mission. I'm working on several large-scale documentaries, and will upload them when they're ready. Until then, never forget the importance of defending children from the infinitely growing threats they face today. We will not let you down. Max. Yeah, I think you already did let them down, uh, to be honest. <laughs> Based on this post, myself and a lot of other content creators assumed that we were going to be expecting some kind of, you know, response video to everything where Max would at least attempt to debunk everything that he'd said about this situation, everything that people criticized him for, and he would try to make some kind of, like, big rebuttal. I mean, he literally implies in these various posts that the people who criticized him have spread misinformation about him, and not only that, that they are preventing the real victims that Max is trying to help from coming to light and telling their story. At least at this point in time, he seemed to be genuinely genuinely delusional still about his own coverage of God called in the uh, Blackula situation, believing that he was a victim of some kind of cancel culture or something along those lines instead of somebody who, you know, was rightfully criticized. I mean, this idea that, you know, he is being slandered, maybe there are people slandering him, you know, there are people out there who, when any situation happens where somebody's being criticized, certain actors, bad actors, will come out of the woodwork to use that as a point of their advantage to slander that person and get their little right hook in, right? But that's not the majority of the conversation that was happening about Max. The majority was pretty terrible. Aim, I would say, and pretty level and fair criticism against him for his horrible coverage of this situation. But I personally was really excited to see some kind of response so I could, like, I don't know, react to it on stream with my chat and act like a fucking idiot. Oh, yes! Oh my god, I'm gooning! Oh, I'm coming! Oh my god, I'm coming! Yeah! Now, for a little context into this next thing, back in the day, one of the biggest controversies around Max's videos revolved around the file sharing service called Mega. Basically, Max would make these big, long videos where he would expose someone, and then in the description of his catching video, he would link a folder on Mega for the public to see. Seemingly, people could see all of his sources. It was a good thing to do. Seemingly, in the interest of journalistic integrity, he was publicizing everything he had, so people were like, oh, that's good, and they just didn't really look into it. But at the time all this went down with Max, someone made a startling discovery about one of his Mega folders. It was through this that a user discovered his mega account had been closed. Not only that, but the notice claimed it had been reported to the authorities for objectionable content. This folder or file was reported to contain objectionable content, such as CSA, violent extremism, or bestiality. The link creator's account has been closed and their full details, including IP addresses, has been provided to the authorities. Now, the first response that comes to mind is that it simply contained proof of people being creeps. But from everything I've seen, that doesn't really make sense. Mega uses a similar method as a lot of sites in detecting illegal content. Basically, illegal stuff is stored in hashes to avoid retaining the original. This allows them to identify material by checking against a database of known hashes. This isn't to say a false positive isn't possible, but it's very rare. Mega, in particular, is quite limited in its appeals, with very few accounts ever being reinstated. The appeals are very interesting. When an account gets hit, they can appeal. But the appeals are so limited that I'm not joking, in certain quarters, they have literally allowed zero appeals to go through. In fact, their highest appeals were 10 appeals. And this is obviously thousands of accounts being taken down. Very, very few accounts ever get reinstated, which I have mentioned is most likely because of a possible false positive. This suggests that Max's account may have possibly, allegedly, according to some people's subjective opinions, had this kind of content uploaded on his profile. Well, in August of 2024, a post from the Mama Max subreddit began making the rounds, which seemed to have another update on the situation. The first update is related to his mega account that was banned, and people speculated that it was for posting CP. But the notice on his account was actually updated recently, and it may potentially confirm that the reason for the ban was in fact for illegal content. When you visited his account before, you would see this message. This folder or file was reported to contain objectionable content such as CSA material, extremism, or reality. The link creator's account has been closed, and their full details have been provided to the authorities. And the statement is what we saw in my original video about Max. Well, now there's a new message where Mega says that they have a zero tolerance policy for unlawful activity. And they even provide a support message for someone who may be inclined to look at uh, illegal stuff stating, if you have concerns and thoughts or behavior regarding images of children, there is confidential anonymous help online. The Stop It Now project helps people deal with these thoughts and make quality changes that can improve the quality of their life. This post would seem to imply that there was some kind of illegal content indeed uploaded to that Mega folder. Although we have yet to get any further confirmation about that from some law enforcement agency or something along those lines. Now, at the time, Max even told me that this account wasn't connected to him, but somebody else, 
which again I, I can choose to believe or not believe at this point his trust isn't entirely uh you know, trust really isn't there so in the last year since all this has happened, Max's channel has lost over 80,000 subscribers. In January of this year, it also seemed like he elected to reinstate a lot of his old videos onto his channel. For the unfamiliar, back in the day, Max was not actually a, uh, a catcher channel, if that's what you want to call him. Back in 2016, he was posting a series called Life Sucks, where he would just kind of talk about common issues that, you know, a lot of people have faced, like bullying, drugs, stuff like that, voice his opinion on it. And a lot of people watched it because they felt like they could relate to those issues and relate to his sort of like very emo, um, re- canting of how that went down for him. Now, as for why he relisted these videos, currently, I do not know. There is this common kind of myth on YouTube, which is that removing a video from your channel will hurt the channel's momentum because it retracts total views from the channel, right? If you go to the about section of any channel, you can see the total channel views. People think that if that goes down, YouTube necessarily de-boosts that channel and it doesn't get recommended anymore. I've never seen any evidence of this being the case, that removing old videos is bad for a channel's health, unless the videos you're removing are getting a ton of views and getting you subscribers, in which case, obviously, you're hurting the momentum of those specific videos directly. But removing old videos, to my knowledge, doesn't have any direct negative effect on your channel as long as you're not like removing videos that are doing well. So I'm not really sure why anyone thinks this. I think it's just like a kind of a YouTube urban legend or whatever. And I also don't know why Max reinstated all of his old videos. Maybe he thought it would put his channel in good standing in the algorithm because then when he posted a new video, it would kind of reinvigorate his channel and have him have a better chance of it doing well in the algorithm. I really can't be sure, but um, he did reinstate those videos. But the Mama Max subreddit would make another interesting discovery as well. Max had been keeping himself busy in his time away from YouTube. According to this source, who provided many pieces of proof, Max is now working and volunteering in two nonprofits where he's directly interacting with at-risk children on a daily basis. One of the roles is as a court-appointed case manager for abused children in the foster care system, and the second is some kind of instructor for under privileged children who want to become filmmakers. The source obviously wants to remain anonymous due to their close proximity with Max, so not all the proof can be released without it compromising his identity, but they did say that we could post these screenshots. Now, I'm censoring these screenshots for obvious reasons. We're going to censor all the uh, pictures of people that aren't Max, as well as the name of the account and stuff like that, just so they don't get, you know, shit. But here we can see a lineup of people, and Max is definitely there. I mean, you can see him right there. Based on the description of the post, it seems to confirm what they said in the Reddit post, which is that he was taking part in some kind of program to help at-risk children who were in the foster system. We also have another screenshot of a Zoom call where Max can be seen there, clear as day, it's definitely him, and the caption for the post indicates it's from around the same time that he became a new advocate for this program. They even have his name in the description. And once again, we're going to censor the other people there, but you know, you can see, uh, you can see it's him. I'm honestly surprised that Max was even allowing this organization to post these photos of him. Like, surely he would have thought in his head, like, okay, somebody's going to see this and they're going to find out that this was me and they're going to talk about it like they are now. Based on one image, it seems like Max has actually been uh, hitting the gym recently though. Listen, I love to see it. Glad to see him take on the uh, the Tom Dark channel advice, okay? Frankly, if Mama Max hops on gear, as far as I'm concerned, all will be forgiven. You know, a late, great, amazing um, fitness influencer by the name of Max Stryker once said, you must punish your body to achieve greatness. True. If it's not clear, I'm, I'm kidding, by the way. Don't do steroids. Oh, sorry if I seem too skinny. Oh, oh. I'll start eating more once I make enough to, to eat more. Now, one concern I've seen a lot of people express is in the idea that people shouldn't, you know, try to get Max fired or something from this job, right? It's this idea that Max doesn't deserve to be stalked forever and have his life ruined in perpetuity because of his actions. And I do agree with that notion in, in general. Like, I think that is definitely true. However, I also think that a guy who fabricated investigations into predators and also potentially hosted CP in a mega file that he released to the public should not be involved with child services whatsoever. To be clear, I don't think he has any attraction to children. That's not what I'm saying but he has such a history of irresponsibility when covering the subject to the point where he's like ruined actual investigations that potentially could have gotten, you know, real victims justice. So I just don't think the guy should be working in a field like this. And also, I highly, highly doubt that Max disclosed his online history when signing up for this program. And obviously, if the people running it knew about his online history, they would think twice about getting him involved. If he wants to get a job, he should be able to. He should be able to get pretty much any job he wants. It just shouldn't be anything relating to this kind of field. But for whatever reason, Max seems intent on protecting children and he thinks that he will protect them. He thinks he will save them. He has kind of a savior complex and he thinks that he belongs in this realm of work. Look, Max, you know what? You're getting jacked, okay? Just work at the gym. Work at uh, work at P-Fit. You'll fit right in. And it seems people from the subreddit contacted this organization he was working with out of concern to the point that he either chose to leave or they personally fired him so he's not, you know, a part of it anymore. Now it's time to get back to Spencer. Spencer is a young woman who allegedly became entrapped in this call that Max was investigating led by a man who believes himself to be a werewolf god. 
and she was supposedly pulled into this cult when she was 16 years old. Max at the time was using these uh, really funny pictures of Camden Gerard Davis, the alleged werewolf in question, to which Max would provoke him with the threat of, uh, <laughs> uh, Leviathans are coming for you. Camden Gerard Davis. Leviathans are coming for you. Now, Spencer was a big point of discussion around the supposed cult, with Max conducting various interviews and streams with her. But due to a number of inconsistencies and frankly, completely outlandish statements with her story, as well as her own admission that she helped this apparent cult leader recruit minors who could then be preyed on, she became a big topic of discussion herself. A lot of people were talking about her. And she ended up being very instrumental to the downfall of Max's channel. At the time all this went down, Spencer was actually living with Max. And as a result, in the aftermath, many questioned if she was still on good terms with him. I mean, there had to have been some arguments revolving around the controversy, right? Well, in March of 2024, someone on Reddit claimed that Spencer has had all of her comments set to manual approval for a few months now, and as of the last week, these three older comments that are critical of Max have been approved. They could have potentially fallen out after the videos, and he was likely unable to keep financially supporting her. Commenters also speculated on how she may have felt used by him. Maybe she felt that he ruined her investigation or something like that. Maybe there was some kind of other argument related to the living situation that went down. But we wouldn't get a true update until August 19th of 2024. A user posted a statement that was sent to the mod team where they offered to tell their own story about Spencer. And they also attached some screenshots that they claim are Spencer's real account talking about Max. Now, it seems like this Instagram account from Spencer wasn't linked anywhere super rigorously, but we do have some screenshots of the account which show it was her. And the reason why her Instagram account went down after the fact appears to be the leaking of these DMs because her account disappeared right after they went on Reddit. Now, I decided to do a little snooping and I did manage to find her Instagram account in Google search results, but upon clicking through, once again, it was removed. And unfortunately, I couldn't find any working archives of it on Wayback Machine or archive.ph. So then I thought, okay, maybe I could find it linked on her channel, but that was taken down too. So I went back to the archives of her and Max's channel, where I also couldn't find it linked in any video descriptions of Max's or her videos from the time. So I clicked her Twitter, but that was wiped and there were no archives of it as well. And the reason I say this is just to say that like, I guess there is like a 0.00001% chance this is not her somehow. The screenshots could be faked, I guess. Um, the, you know, whole thing with before her, her account being up and then it going down right after these screenshots got posted. Maybe that's just pure coincidence or something, but you know, I think it's her, but maybe there is some small, small possibility it's not. Anyway, in the screenshots, she says, so I ended up moving in with a YouTuber that was supposed to help me expose the cult as it was my last resort. He promised to cover food, medical, everything. Well, he only wanted to help for the money, so he never paid any of my medical expenses from the start. He was buying food at first, but then he tanked his career, which in turn has people convinced I'm a bad person like him, so people are stalking me online, and he wants me out because he's not making good money off of me, but he still wants to try to make money off of me. He got me a dog and had me move everything I own to anchor me. I figured out a foster for my dog until I can find permanent housing, but my biggest issue is needing someone willing to drive the full 18 hours from Dallas to here and here back. I have the U-Haul trailer figured out, but I'm panicked because if I don't get out after my dog leaves on the 15th, I'll be stuck here until after my birthday and have no way to really feed myself. I've been having to live off of donating plasma because I was limited to remote work and I don't qualify for anything remote due to my inexperience. I just need to be back near people I know. No. Donating plasma for for rent money? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Just get a job. Work at McDonald's. I'm loving it. He's not physically hurting me, but he was withholding funds that were supposed to be mine since January. Saw me struggling to donate plasma just to feed my dog and myself. He gaslights me and also tried to convince me to break up with Michael. He had $5,000 he was supposed to give back to me as funds for the survivors of the cult, but everyone else fucked off. I asked for the money every now and again, but his excuse was always something about bills. That moment when you need to pay bills. <laughs> that moment when <laughs> you're mad because the guy who's supposed to give you money has to pay bills. I mean, he did promise it, but still. I finally remembered again today, and he's taking 1700 in expenses, so I only get 3300 and he wants to do it in five payments of 660 I got my first payment today, but with covering my dog's transportation and my friend to foster him, it sent me back a bit. If you make a post, please just don't name me as people on Reddit are stalking me because of this YouTuber, and I don't want to add any fuel to their fire. But hey, even calling around means the world. I'm taking what I can get at this point. Overall, moving Spencer in with him was a major conflict of interest in the first place, frankly, even besides all these other problems that she's claiming happened. When you're covering a serious situation like this, you need to do it impartially. You need to be able to analyze all of the evidence independently without any personal bias so that you can determine what is true and what is not and ultimately publish that rather than some, you know, crazy biased account of what happened. The problem for Max seems to be that people reached out to him about this cult. He thought it would be a great story. And then he started talking about it publicly like he was Batman or something while also moving in one of the supposed victims to his own apartment. He then started calling out critical and Joe 
Rogan, acting like he was Batman. Joe Rogan, Joseph Rogan, Joseph Anthony Rogan. When he didn't even have all of his ducks in a row yet. Like, he was demanding other people cover this. People with big platforms who have a lot to lose from fucking up a story, and he didn't even have the story yet. And when the investigation wasn't over, once again, he already had her living with him. So now, her financial stability as a quote-unquote disabled person who cannot work rests on if Max can pull off this case. And he couldn't pull it off, as we all know, and it torched his entire career, so he had to look for a new job. And he's having to look for a new job while he's also got this victim living with him who he promised that he would, like, financially support. Now, also attached to these screenshots, we have a long post about Spencer talking about the kind of person she is, at least in the words of this poster. Now, just keep in mind, you know, all of this can be taken with a grain of salt. There are stuff this poster says that seem to align with the DMs from Spencer, but there's other stuff that don't because they predate the DMs themselves, and, you know, the content discussed is not related to the DMs, you know, really at all. But I think it's still interesting to read, so we'll see what we can get from this. I've known Spencer since I was 15. I want to clear the air. She was always kind to me, so it hurts me to post this, but also she kind of abused my empathy in her to the fullest, and I know enough to make a credible post. And I have her seats if needed. She did go missing at some point in time, but she knew of Max, and Max knew her. Now this poster gets into the cult stuff, saying, Camden did have Spencer come to Georgia. She says she talked her way into getting on a bus, but when she told me the story after years of not seeing each other because of Camden and the whole situation, then reconnecting, she told me that he bought her the ticket. I never knew about the vampire werewolf stuff, but I know she wrote fan fiction about it, and I feel maybe she was so lost in the internet that this fantasy could be real to her. I don't know. She never told me she would recruit other young underage girls for him. She told me he was doing this to other girls, and it was a cult that other girls were involved in. I think she hid this information from me because of how it would look. When I found out just yesterday through an edit of their podcast that she basically groomed girls, I was disgusted. As we previously bonded over being groomed. I felt for her because I had a bad situation happen to me before and I understood her. And when I found out she did that, referring to recruiting people for the cult, and never told me or others I was friends with who would hang out with her, and she would basically share the story often, she never mentioned grooming or bringing in other girls. I guess because of that reason. She was grooming. Now they go on to talk about Spencer's supposed disability, flat out saying, she has no disability. I myself was paid to take her to get it checked out so she could receive disability checks. Essentially, she was denied because there was no disability. Yeah, I mean, that's not really, you know, surprising. Once again, I don't know if this post is real, but, um, yeah, I, I believe that. Later on in our friendship, she mentioned a guy that has a YouTube channel called Mama Max, who she was friends with for years and wants to help get justice for her and the other girls. And it would take some years to do this. I thought it was great because she'll be getting justice. She opened up about her many miscarriages, and as someone who also miscarried, I also felt bad. But in the back of my mind, I found it odd the amount of miscarriages she had in the course of a couple of months and years. It was too much for the body, and not physically possible. And the timing of pregnancy and miscarriage never added up. But again, I allowed my emotions and empathy to get the better of the truth. My mom also had three miscarriages in the course of six years. You can't have five miscarriages in a year, you know? Anyway, not to trauma dump, but she would share these stories with other people I would introduce her to, and they would always tell me that she's lying, but she's so deep in her lies, she believes them. I also have a friend who's a psychologist. We all went to a club together, and when he met her, he said she definitely has trauma, but from that unhealed trauma, she's developed a victim mentality, and even believes the lies she says to stay being a victim. She cannot have normal disagreements or issues. They have to be extreme. At the club, the moment she was not the center of attention, she wanted to leave and forced us to end it early. She also asked to live with me. As someone who was also in a domestic abuse situation years ago, I felt for her abuse from situations she would talk about. I felt bad. I wanted to help, but I needed her to know she needed to work. I also had another roommate at the time, and they didn't feel comfortable having her there and live because they felt we would become caretakers and she would not actually work, as she is openly adamant that she can't hold a job because of this disability that is never addressed. As someone with a physical disability and mental one, I still go to work every day. Everyone had shit going on. You work to improve your life, and I wrongly felt I can encourage that on them. I pay 1500 in rent and have two jobs. I let her stay with me for a week because a certain situation was getting more abusive, as she claimed. I had just paid my expensive rent and had $10 or $20 to last till the next week. She openly complained about the food I had bought as it was my till next check food, which was gross frozen meals and vegetables. I kind of became offended because, hey, I'm trying to help you, you know? That raised a red flag, which should have been raised a long time ago. But I finally became weary and immediately took her home the next night. I would actively send her jobs hiring near her and walking distance. I would tell her about Lyft, that they will cover your rides till you get paid. I kept telling her ways to improve her situation, and she wouldn't. From there, I just ghosted. I didn't want to, and I felt bad, and she responded with some angry messages, but I didn't know how to confront her. As someone who's been through a lot of bad shit, I was unsure if she was telling the truth, and I was being rude and not believing, or if she was lying and I'm right. I became very confused. I don't know why, but I did. And I typically have a really strong head on my shoulders. I had feelings for her as well bro. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you can say what you want, but the way she made me laugh, and I also found her beautiful. Yeah. Anyway, we stopped talking, and a year later, she reached out and apologized for everything. 
I forgave, and I apologized for not being able to communicate with her. But she was trying to force herself to stay in my apartment and saying she could feed me and take care of me to make up for not being able to work, and all of a sudden, more drama and abuse was getting worse. Something is not right. She also has a partner online, and they finally met twice, and within a week of meeting up, she all of a sudden miscarried from having sex and admitted he didn't come in her. I was like, okay, that's such a lie. Well, which one is the lie? Is it the, the, like, he, he didn't come in her, or he did come in her, or she didn't have a miscarriage, or I guess the part that's a lie is she had a miscarriage, and then she realized she was lying because he didn't, whatever, dude, I hate this, whatever, which was another thing that made me back off. When I saw her posting on Facebook, I checked in to make sure she was okay. She was living with Max. She says he's not abusing her, just being verbally aggressive, and they're not in a relationship. She also asked me not to post anything because people were harassing her. When I realized what this all had to deal with, I felt like making this post. I think Spencer has a habit of wanting to live with people to escape and not putting in effort to work or improve. This cult essentially holds no substance, and a lot of it is embellished, most definitely, and her I cannot speak on. I'm sorry for the gr grammatical weirdness and like the sentence being typed so shitty. This is how they type it, but uh, the way they typed it is, were these other women's victims? Most definitely, and her I cannot speak on. I assume that's what she's trying to say with the phrasing, but the lack of any commas or anything, just listen. I'm, I'm a nerd, okay? It's bothering me. But she has a habit of using people, and I think Mama Max thought he was gonna get some fame out of it, but realized there's nothing there. It's a tragic story, and I'm sure Spencer went through stuff. But Spencer lies and steals. They stole my Coraline doll that my dad got me in high school. LOL. Ha <laughs> ha! Funny. It's a silly thing, I know, but it's my favorite movie and my dad got it for me. Like, how crazy is it to steal a doll? They have a habit of making themselves a victim for people to feel sorry for, and will even find a new lie to match up to your trauma. If they aren't the center of attention, they will become sad and start trauma dumping so everyone will listen. People didn't want to bring me around anymore because I was hanging out with her, and I don't blame them. It's all bullshit. That's it. That's all I have to say. I'm sure that Camden did something, but it was role-playing taken too far. They can work. They can get a job. They aren't being abused in the way they're broadcasting it to be. They just don't want to put in the work. She says that Max owes her five grand and she never received it till she finally bugged him enough and he said he would pay her in installments. I think the videos did not get enough views or he didn't receive the revenue he thought he would get off of her and he couldn't keep the agreement of the money. And some of the money she did have already that he gave her, she's used to get out of her situation as well as donating plasma and moving back to another location. Now, is this the truth? I don't know. This is what she told me when I asked her what she's doing to get out of the situation. They both essentially used each other and it's backfiring. The money that should go to victims is being used to get her back to a different location. The installments are apparently six. 60 a month. I think Max didn't starve her, but tried to get her to improve herself as many have tried to do, including myself, but they view it as harm. They being Spencer, the, you know, they, them, whatever. This is just a thought. I have no evidence to say he isn't doing these things. And same thing. I informed her of going to homes or reaching out to communities that can help her or working. I mentioned if she works a month or less, she'll have the money to leave, but instead she got money through donations. And every person I would introduce them to would change their stories up to where when they would talk, the other person would be confused because they told one person one thing and told me one thing. Max should have fact checked before allowing this and this will be one of the many things of his downfall. And that's the end of this uh, very grammatically proper whatever. I, I know I'm being, I'm probably being pedantic, but I'm sorry. If you're gonna make a post like this that I have to read in my video, take a college level English class or even a, a fifth grade level English class, please. Let's just like, don't, don't type whatever. The typing is bad, okay? That's what I'm saying. Now, you can obviously take this post with a grain of salt if you want. I personally kind of believe this person's retelling and not for the best reason, honestly. It's just because of, um, you know, I, I looked at Spencer. I physically looked. My eyes met a visage of Spencer and I was like, yeah, that sounds like her, but it could be all bullshit. So don't just, you know, believe what I think. We have no direct proof for most of this. The most we have that this person's credible at all is based on these screenshots, which don't exactly line up with what the person said apart from details regarding, you know, the, the specific messages. As for, like, the personal kind of attacks towards Spencer and calling her, like, a lazy, um, fat idiot, we don't really have a lot in the way of that. Or do we? But what I can say is that if all of this is true, then it definitely makes sense when you fit it into the greater context of the Mama Max story. It remains to be seen for now if Spencer will make some kind of formal statement about all this herself, or if she'll just allow her messages to get screenshotted and then post it on Reddit, and then she'll delete her account to run from it. Now, for a little update here, uh, as I was recording this video, actually, Max announced that he, uh, was seemingly coming back to YouTube on his own YouTube channel with a four minute long, very short video where he basically said that he had been uh, misrepresented by the YouTube community. There's a lot uh, I have to share with you over the next few uploads. It may be decades before the truth around this case comes to light and the survivors will speak up when they are ready. But I would like to start uploading again. Now, you've probably heard a lot of different things about me. <laughs> uh, distinguishing between what's real and what's not. 
uh, is a challenge in the year 2024. <laughs> and it's probably only going to get harder as time goes on. Uh, he even, he claimed that people were under mass psychosis and that's why they were criticizing him rather than like the fact that he clearly f***ed up some investigations and he was <laughs> not a, not very good at it at all. Mass psychosis is very real and I'm sure you all can pretty much feel it at this point. Now, people have taken my silence as an omission of guilt. That is not the case. I was simply respecting the wishes of those I was advocating for. But I am not the monstrous villain that I've been caricaturized as. Uh, I don't care. I don't care who says I'm doing this for money or clout. I have lost that <laughs> and I'm still doing this work because it truly matters because it's it is very important work. And he also announced that he would be coming back with some more videos talking about things. So maybe we're going to see some kind of update from him. Maybe we're going to see some kind of more comprehensive response to different YouTubers or something like that. Um, unfortunately, it seems like he's still on the same wave that he was on, so to speak, before. So uh, it doesn't seem like Max has changed as a person. It seems like he's going to continue doing the deflections, uh, running from the truth, seemingly, and not really giving any good explanation for how he f***ed up that case at all. Uh, so yeah, sucks to suck. Anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out all of my other channels in the description below for more content, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye. So if you take away one thing from this channel, let it be this.